uh, I, uh, on behalf of Gandhi Smriti and uh, Darshan Samiti New Delhi, welcome uh, Brother Chiziko Nanana Ibiko. And he is a very, yes, very senior very mediator, uh, mediator in Nigeria. He is a counselor, he is an author, and a legal practitioner. In fact, brother, I have gone through your very, very interesting book on mediation, and that was really interesting. Very simple to read, very simple, easy to understand. And that is, I think, the best part of the book because there are, I have read quite a number of materials on mediation, though they are very, very complicated, things like that. So in that context, its book is very, very easy to understand. So thank, congratulations for the book, brother. Uh, and uh, Chiziko, brother Chiziko is the fellow of the Chartered Institution of Auctioners and he's a firm believer of God. And uh, in fact, he is, uh, his hobbies are playing table tennis, football, and taking long walks. So uh, welcome, uh, uh, brother Chiziko, to this uh, dialogue on mediation. In fact, let me tell you at its outset that Gandhi Smithy is the national memorial of Mahatma Gandhi, the place where Gandhi was assassinated. And we are developing a free uh, online course on community mediation, which will be open free of course to people all across the world. And in fact, in today's uh, uh, dialogue, this is the seventh dialogue we are having. What all you are saying, it will be transcribed and we are going to use uh, your, what, uh, your session, your conversation as the reading material for the course material on community mediation. So, we will have a very interesting uh, uh, viewpoint idea from Africa and Nigeria in this context. So, uh, brother, if you are ready, can we start the dialogue right away? Hello? Can anyone hear me? Gulchan? Yes, Hello, yes Gulchan? Sir, you are very much audible. Yes, you are very much audible. Audible, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, Can I be heard? Hear you, so should we start now? Yes, right. let okay. us start. So, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I thank you for the privilege uh, to share my knowledge of mediation with you, gentlemen. Um, I've, I've been, um, I'll be properly guided by what I've been told to share with you people today. I'm talking on community mediation. Yes, yes. I'm talking about right. community so can mediation. I share those... Can I share those points which I shared with you so that it comes in the recording? You know, uh, let it, let it, uh, uh, let, all us right, okay. it. let us. Okay. Okay. All right. Let us. Also, be the students who are going to take this. Course. So let me also share this point. That so uh, we are again. Uh, I'm really honored to have uh, uh, Mr. Chijuke Nanana Ibiko, my young brother from Nigeria. Uh, so, brother, uh, please share your thoughts on community mediation in Africa and in Nigeria in the context where you are working. And also, it would be wonderful if you can give some idea of community mediation in the context of the entire Africa. If you have uh, also in that context, uh, I would request you to kindly share some interesting, insightful studies of community mediation from different parts of Africa and also from your country, Nigeria. So, it would right. be such a wonderful thing. Listen to you, all right, brother. Thank, Please start. thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much, brother. I would like, first of all, before I delve into sharing the experience on community mediation, I'd like to, first of all, uh, intimate us with what community mediation is all about. Uh, I beg your pardon for those who might have the knowledge, but I'd like to have a build up. I'd like to have that as a foundation. Community mediation, I often refer to it as interpersonal mediation. Interpersonal mediation. Community, you know, has to do with people. I often refer to it, my book, I refer to it as interpersonal mediation. And uh, it's, it's a constructive process of resolving conflicts between individuals, groups, and organizations in a community by a third person neutral who is a mediator. And that is why I guess we are now all trying to be mediators or want to know who, who a mediator is. So community mediation is a constructive process of resolving conflicts between individuals groups, organizations in a community by a third person neutral. The person has to be neutral and he's known as a mediator. So that is it. That is a building. That is where we should take it off from. Then uh, you've asked me to share my experiences about community mediation in Nigeria. 
Uh, well, I like to restrict. I'll, I have three peculiar examples. I, I also wrote them about in my books. I found them very interesting amongst others, and that's why I, I shared them in my book. In my book, I recently wrote, which you have a copy of. Uh, communism, in the, you know, in, in Nigeria, for instance, and I believe in some African situations or African, other African countries, you might have a situation where you have, uh, I have a, I had a particular one I was called to mediate upon. A, I don't know how you how you people have it in India, but you have a, you could have a block of flats rented out by a landlord to some tenants, and they had a particular issue about their refuse, their bin, their dust bin, the trash being taken care of. And these women were at each other's throats every day. It became a, a, a very, very, very terrible situation for the manager. I happened to be the manager to the property solicitor, like you all know, I'm also a lawyer. And it became a very thorny issue on how to resolve that issue because the women were at each other's throats. So what, and you know, you know, people really do not look at, people just look at issues without being careful enough to see how can I avoid this particular issue? So what happened? I just raised up a person. I said, okay, if you have a lot of all these debts around the compound, you only have one trash can. We can simply apply for another trash can to the body with the, the, the government body that is responsible for clearing waste bins. And I did that. And once we did that, I noticed that the level of bickering reduced drastically. There was not much tension again. They did not have that tension of always being at each other's roots because the issue they were always having was, ah, we only have, you're, 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 you're littering my own space, you're not littering my own space. But once I made an, a provision for an alternative dust, uh, dust bin, uh, this, uh, that matter was reduced to the, was reduced completely. That issue never arose again in that same compound. Then I have another issue about uh, um, a, a particular compound that they had a mango tree. A man planted a I'll give an instance. A man planted a house, planted a, man, a mango tree in house A, for instance, and the branches got across to house B. And you know, and the right three man now said, "Okay, these mangoes have gotten across to my own house. <laughs> that these mangoes are mine." And the man in A said, "No, this um, this mango is mine." It only happened that the branches got across to yours. And that also became an issue. If not well resolved, it was going to be, was going to um, zero down to trespass. For those of us who, if you're not a lawyer, you know, you know what trespass is. It was going to zero down to being, a, you know, a, 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 there's going to be a lot of thoughts. It was going to go to court for trespass. So what do we have to do? What do we do? We immediately thought about what to do. We said, okay, look, this branch has gone into this man's house. How much of these mangoes can you actually have? Why don't you let go of the one that has gone to the man's house? You can even okay, say, ah, look, okay, let that be your own, you know, let that be your own bit of share. Because even if you cut the mango, if you decide to cut it, if it grows again, it will still sprout and get over there. And it's funny thing, there was no other space for the man to have replanted that mango if he had cut it down. So we just had to tell him to just see how you could, you know, let go of some things. A lot of things that life is not all that difficult if you, if you really learn to take step by step on how to address some issues in life. The, the third one was about a particular school field. It was a field, you know, uh, a, a group of parents in a particular neighborhood got uncomfortable about having a particular school field, a school build a particular field in their neighborhood. They felt that the children were going to expose, they are going to be exposed to a lot of vices because children will use that as an excuse to say, okay, I'm going out there and some of them could abuse drugs. And we looked, we told them, why do you look at negatives? Why do you have to look at the negatives? Why don't you look at the positive, first of all? Most of you are getting older. You need a place where you might not have to pay little or nothing for exercise. If you're going to walk around the field, if you want to jog, if you want to do anything. So why don't you look at the, 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 the advantages first before you begin to look at the disadvantages? And the children about being, the fear of being exposing the children to vices. We thought it wise to say, okay, look, at a particular time, at a particular time, these children are not meant to be there. So you see, being now the fear of being exposing their children to vices, because most of these terrible things, plus or minus, happen at night. So you say, look at a particular time from five, from one to seven, no child should be there, being in your various homes. And plus or minus, to a very great extent, we've reduced the, the, the team became very profitable to put the parents in the neighborhood and to the school authorities. So these are the three examples we've had. I've had then a particular one that is brewing. Most of you are much, your contemporary with what is happening in Nigeria. The issues of the head, the issue of the headsmen and the farmers. We in our own little space humbly have preferred some solutions to 
the government in power, but whether they listen or not is now left to them. We've said you cannot, these things have places they can try better. These things, these, the, the cows have a place, or there are some people who are offering their spaces for where they can try better, where you can even make better money with them. Why do you have to force them down somebody's throat who does not want them to be around him? So, you know, these are issues that are contemporary that I felt, I don't know whether that can, um, I brought it to the fore, or whether that can, you know, bring it nearer to you people and for the, you know, bring it nearer home for you to appreciate. I don't know. Hello? Hello? Can I ask you here with this beautiful example that you have shared with us? Uh, like, uh, what are the various traditional forms of community mediation in Nigeria and possibly in Africa, in different countries of Africa? So, if you could kindly share light on that. Okay. You know, some uh, of the interesting uh, okay. Maybe, yeah, about like, maybe okay, remember, the, one that uh, come, the one that can come to mind readily to me is land disputes. Land disputes, land disputes. You could have land disputes amongst the same members of same family. Maybe if you, like for instance, you have a brother, and, you're, and uh, you have a brother, maybe your father left an estate for the two of you. We have these particular issues in Nigeria. If they're not very careful about it, it brews down to disputes, land disputes. Maybe this person says, I'm entitled to this particular portion. You've crossed over to my own portion. Why would you cross over to my own portion? And we've let, you know, we've told them that these things can be resolved amicably. Most people even go to the extent of killing off one another because of land. I don't know if you have such issues in, in, in India. So basically, we've also waded into these instances that arise in our own setup by saying, okay, um, you know, you just you let them know that community mediation basically is about, like, I, you know, if, like, at, my, at, my, at my intro, I started off with saying that community mediation is interpersonal. So you have to let the person know that this is, this is a personal relationship. You're not going to, if you keep saying you want to have this matter brew and not to get to the extent of litigation, when is it ever going to stop? Because it's going to be a generational sin. You're going, that person is not able to leave that community because of you. You will not leave because of that person. So why don't you learn to see how you can mend whatever issue will arise? So we've tried as much as possible when land disputes, like for instance, the ones that come up in Africa, particularly are land disputes. You say, okay, uh, I have this particular land. If you've trespassed here, Okay, I have another one, some other place. I can exchange. I can mm -hmm. give you mine. I can give you mine in exchange for this one here that I want so that mm -hmm. I will not have much issue with you. And that has to ex some extent also reduce the level of land conflicts in communities That's in Nigeria. Right. Okay, okay. Uh, here, uh, uh, brother, I would like to uh, ask you, you see, uh, when we are talking of mediation in the community, mediation in different institutions, uh, what according to you uh, and how according to you, we can promote this uh, and encourage a mediator's mindset amongst the people, you know, so that uh, for every small reason, they need not go to the for litigation. They would prefer to go for the mediation so that it is mm -hmm. much better. So how do we enhance the scope of mediation mindset amongst the people at large? That is indeed very well. Thank you very much for that question. Like I said, you know, we, like I said at the intro, is a, mediation is basically a constructive process of resolving disputes. It's very constructive. So in other words, you know, when, someone is, when something is constructive, it means a lot of things are being put in place to make it a viable, a viable option. So what do you do in making sure that people have this mindset in communities? You have to let them know the advantages of mediation. What are the advantages of mediation? Once some people get to know the advantages of mediation, plus or minus, they are at peace with it. They are comfortable with the practice. So I like to reel out the advantages of mediation, community mediation again. You know, in community mediation, you're particular about preservation of relationships. Once people have that, once people in the community have this mindset that the relationship can be preserved. I don't know, I don't need to go to, I don't need to go to the whole full hall of litigation, which may severe our relationship or may invariably tarnish the relationship. So once people have the mindset that ah, it, these matters can be resolved, any dispute can be resolved and our relationship will be preserved, they will have a positive mindset towards it. And of course, nobody wants to spend unnecessarily. 
if people appreciate that cost, that there is not much cost attached to mediation, they'll be encouraged to practice it. They will have a positive mindset towards it. If they also have in mind, you know, people have people have this feeling that when they achieve something on their own, if they have a process that says, ah, this issue, this matter that was resolved was resolved solely by our efforts. There was no much of a formal talk, a formal party being involved. And it was my own. Remember, you know, if I was only guided to reach a decision. People are happier when they say this decision was reached solely by me and my brother, or me and my friend, or me and my colleague. People are happier when it's not, you know, it's not, it's nobody forced down a decision down their throats. And that is what the positive mindset people will have around community mediation, because the decisions that reached are solely the re decisions of the parties involved. It's not by a judge. So people are happier when they say, okay, uh, I, I, gave this, I gave this opinion and my opinion was adopted. They feel much happier than saying somebody said, follow this opinion. People are much happier when they say, it's my opinion that was adopted and we achieved a result to that. Then we also want to talk about um, the, why they should also have the, the, the mindset of uh, mediation. Why people in the community will have a good mindset towards mediation. Matters can be resolved like issues of debts, if you're owing issues of personal issues, business transactions, land disputes, like I mentioned, property damages, and succession disputes. So people, if they know that within the within 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 my network or within my space, I can resolve an issue. I can resolve an issue within my space. They'll be more, they'll be happier. They'll have a positive mindset to it. I don't know if this has answered your question in any way. Uh, in fact, in this context, I would like uh, uh, you to kindly reflect on how you are promoting the whole idea of community mediation in uh, uh, Nigeria and also possibly if you can share something about Africa and also uh, how, uh, you know, how robust is the system of mediation in your country? Like if you could share light All on right. that. Okay. Yeah, that is the problem, you know, I, I'm sure you also have that same problem in India. It's not as established as mediation hasn't 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 hit that mark yet. It hasn't hit that mark yet, and that is why I'm sure you also have that problem. I'm mean, also in the same train like I am in Nigeria. It hasn't hit that mark, and that is why those of us in our spaces are trying as much as possible through books. So I do a lot of seminars. I try and I've written a book which you already know. I do seminars monthly to encourage the practice of mediation. My firm, my firm is called Three Cs Met, Three Cs Met Mediations, Three Cs Met Mediators. That's what my firm is called. We are trying as much as possible to see how we can even get to the grassroots. Get to the grassroots. Nigeria is a big space, 36 states plus one, 37, over the six geographical zones. So we are trying as much as much as possible to see how we can get to these zones, get to the grassroots, train people. You know, if you train them, give them some level of uh, training. Like on Saturday, by the end of this month, I have um, trained some people through my seminars. I will confirm them the certificate they will get from my, my, my center will be community peace ambassadors because I have trained them within the best effort of mine where they will appreciate all phases of mediation, particularly community mediation. They should be able to, in their own general communities, be able to ameliorate any dispute that wants to escalate beyond the ordinary or beyond the normal. So, you know, that is how we've done this. We're trying very instant, you know, we are trying to see in my own little school, like I said, it is not established, and I guess it's not also as established as in India. But those of us in this practice are trying as much as possible to see how we can bring it to limelight, how we can take it to the zenith, you know, make it established, create more awareness on it. For instance, like I'll give you an instance, I said my own organization, we are trying to go to the grassroots. We are going to go there, try to, you know, train. I've already started training people in my space in Abuja. I said the capital, I have a monthly, I've trained them. So what it now, it now entails is, if it, but you know, like I was discussing, this is costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money to do a flight from Abuja to Enugu or Abuja to Medjugorje. It's a lot of money. So it costs a lot, a lot of money. So if I was to take that, if I was to go the full haul, I'd be fully expended on my own. And because it's not yet established, the government is not yet so willing to push in some funds. And that is why those of us in our own little spaces are looking for sponsors or partners who can share this vision with. And once we get them, the mission is as good as done. But in our own little spaces, through the seminars we conduct monthly, we've created avenues for people to have an in and is an on hand knowledge of how to resolve conflicts that arise in communities.
also brother in this uh, context uh, as you are talking about the training what are the you know because uh, as i mentioned to you we are also trying to develop this whole uh, course uh, tra and training orientation material uh, 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 course on uh, the community mediation what are the generally the contents of your training program and how you have been able to uh, you know shape it and uh, uh, you know what are the process of training if you can kindly share light so it will be a great help to us here in india uh, to develop this whole uh, approach so if you could, could okay. share training content and also the uh, approach that you are taking no you have been doing it for a long time so it would be wonderful to learn from your experiences brother okay so what i do basically is i uh, for the training, I, you know, I, like I said, I call, I address each area of practice of mediation as a facet. You all have, you know, mediation is, mediation spans into a lot of areas. There, there's no area of our life that mediation doesn't have, you, you don't talk about, you can't, that cannot be mediated upon. So what do I do? I talk, I go to a lot of issues on mediation. I look at insurance. I look at the wheels. I look mm -hmm. at the community. I look at the environment. I look at oil and gas. All areas mm -hmm. of, all areas of practice in our human endeavor. I streamline it to mediation. So I have this as topics. So every mm. month I say, okay, this month I'll teach on this. And as I mm. teach on that, I bring mediation to bear. I bring mm -hmm. the practice of mediation to bear. I try as much as possible within my humble knowledge to expose that part I have brought to bear for the participants to appreciate. So mm -hmm. it's basically that, you know, just reel out the faces, reel out the different areas of mediation, adapt it, and bring it to bear so that the people who are particip who have the participants will appreciate it and hopefully once they get this knowledge they can spread it or you know you know also improve on it and uh, generate other ideas on how they can also move forward in mediation in that my little space i have in that in that state i have achieved creating more awareness of mediation and encourage the practice by these seminars i'm doing mm -hmm. uh, yeah in fact uh, here in this context uh, uh, may I ask uh, other people also in case they have some questions for uh, uh, brother, uh, uh, you are all uh, welcome to ask him questions on the mediation process and the way it is there. And also possibly we have Mansi here also who is doing a PhD brother on the whole issue of mediation and nonviolent communication. So Mansi, would you like to also uh, chip in with a few questions? Uh, uh, would you like to ask uh, brother also? or I continue my questions, I have quite a number of them also. So, Mansi, would you like to ask some questions or Rasdeep or anyone? Uh, anyone interested to ask some questions so that uh, uh, others all also get an opportunity to ask questions instead of myself alone? Yes, Mansi, I think you are ready. Yes. Can you ask yeah. something related to training and uh, on, uh, you know, the communication process in mediation and all? Yeah. So, am I audible? You are. You are. You are. You are. You are. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, yes, Good I have a few questions uh, regarding the process of uh, mediation, sir. Uh, first of all, I would like to know uh, whether these uh, techniques which are used in community mediation differ from case to case. Or is there anything uh, uh, which can be applied universally to uh, to each and every case which one is handling? And how uh, uh, the, the te these techniques are useful in settling a new narrative into the minds of mediating parties? Also, if uh, since uh, when we talk about nonviolent communication, it is very empathetic in nature. And so how are the biases, the emotional biases of the mediator removed uh, uh, while mediating, sir? So as of now, uh, these are my questions, uh, which uh, that would be very kind of you if, if you could please answer them, sir. All right, what's your name again? Sir, I'm Manu. Pardon? I, uh, I can't what? hear you. If you could what's please- What's your name me? again? Also, what's your name? I heard you. Sir, I'm Mansi. Mansi Sharma. Okay, Mansi. Okay, okay, Mansi. All right, Mansi. I'd like to start with the non-violent, um, non-violent communication. Where you say that the how would the mediator remove his emotion? And we know what non. We, we know basically. You know, uh, we know basically what the purpose of non-violent communication in mediation is all about. 
You know, in nonviolent in nonviolent communication in mediation, what we are focusing on is the feelings and the language. Feelings and the language, the language function and words that are, that are the extremely important things we look forward to. The language functions and the words. And you know, because it's the, the norm looks at the compassion, emotion will be involved. But you have to remember as a mediator that you cannot afford to betray your emotion because emotion, because emotion is involved in resolving disputes. What you're only trying to do is to try as much as possible. We are humans quite all right. But to try as much as possible to make sure that the emotions you feel, because nonviolent communication is about compassion. You're trying to use, you know, your, your, like you use the word rightly, empathy. You're, you're, put, you're, you're putting yourself in a place. You're putting yourself in a place. You could say, okay, ah, this issue has a reason. How would it be? How would I feel if, it were, if I were the one involved? In trying to say, okay, how would I feel in the, if I were the one involved? You have to be very objective. You have to know where to draw the line. It's possible to know where to draw the line. It's possible not to be too involved emotionally. You can be, you can relate to a matter emotionally without being too involved emotionally. There has to be a point. You have to know the point where you have to draw the line, so you don't cross that path. Because once you cross that path, you've betrayed the process of mediation through nonviolent communication. But we have to also know the what are the rudiments. You know, we have to know. Like I was, when I was taking time to prepare. Uh, we, we have to appreciate what are the, the, the when you appreciate nonviolent communication. You know what does it basically is about emotions, emotions, not positions. You know, emotions, not positions, feelings, and not issues. Feelings and not issues. So once you have to see because emotions and feelings are the key issues, your emotion will of course come to play. But you know how you have to be very careful to let let not that emotion go to the extent of betraying the process and that is very possible i don't know if you appreciate that that is very so as humans you have to know where to draw the line for instance if you if you know your children like a lot of biscuits and they've eaten you know they take uh, they like a lot of biscuits and biscuits makes i'm just trying to say, i hope this example can push it better they like a lot of ice creams or whatever and you're giving them 10 okay they want 20. You, you you have to know that no i cannot give beyond 10 because if i give beyond 10 this child might become diabetic. So it's also, I'm, I don't know if that's, a, I don't know, that's what I can relate to now. So if you're saying, if you're involved in a process, you're trying to say, okay, this is a nonviolent communication in mediation. You say, so, okay, ah, how far can I go with this emotion? With this emotion that I have let into this process, this should be able to achieve a successful mediation process. But if I go beyond this, it will betray the process. Then the techniques, you asked me about the techniques. Mediation is general. Over every, pre, every procedure I practice in Nigeria here, you can practice it in India. What are the basic, what are the, the standard advantage of mediation is, is constant all over the clients. What you seek to achieve in mediation in Nigeria is what you seek to achieve in mediation in India. Because the advantages, like I say, is constant. You seek to make sure that relationships are preserved, costs is effective, you understand? Mm -hmm. So it's it's general everywhere. It, it doesn't it's not restrictive for a particular client. I don't know if I've answered your question. Mm -hmm. No, in fact, in this context, as you are talking, brother, about emotions and uh, the whole realm of positions versus interests, uh, I would like to ask you, as someone who is a mediator, you uh, know, you have long years of experience as a mediator. How challenging or how difficult it is for you? To remain neutral when you are mediating between the conflicting parties how how challenging it is you know to get over with your biases get over with your emotions wow that is a very difficult thing it's very challenging i must confess but you know in in uh a, you know in in mediation the very key things about mediation is that once you want to get involved as a mediator First thing, the ground rules, you have to know them first. You have to establish your credibility. You have to establish your impartiality. You have to establish your neutrality. You have to, if you, as I mean, I know, as I know you now, I can't go to mediate in a matter that has to do with you without letting your, the other disputants know that I know you. So if it has to do with emotions, people, you need to know if you're related, for instance, if you have a sister in law who has an issue, with somebody and the matter is brought to you. You have to establish that point that, look, I know this woman, she's my sister-in-law. 
if you allow me to continue with this process of mediation, plus or minus, my, my emotion might come in to say, okay, I know this person, I know this particular party. But as a, mediate, as a mediator, because one of the factors, one of the key components of mediation is neutrality. So you have to make sure that no matter how emotionally engaged you are, you have to try as much as possible to be neutral. If you cannot handle it, the best thing is to say, you know, I can't, I can't get involved in this mediation process. The best thing is before the mediation gets kickstarts, if you cannot handle it, you, 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 you excuse yourself from the process. But so, I must confess uh, that... it's challenging, but it's doable. So that neutrality and the ability to draw a line, uh, do you think that it is uh, natural to a person? Uh, are people born with that kind of ability or uh, do we need some kind of training to acquire them? Well, it can come in both, fr it can come in both fronts. There are some people who are born like that. There are some people who are born, who are born to draw the mark. There are some people who just know you, just, you know you can't pull, that's, you know, some human personalities. There are people who, no matter how emotionally involved in their matters, if they have to address an issue, they address it. There are people who also, out of training, they learn to say, okay, I, I'm emotionally engaged, but because of virtue of my training, how far can I go? So it, it comes in the true fronts, Marty. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Marty. Thank you, Veda, sir. I am done with my questions, sir. If you... Uh, Veda sir, are you there? Oh, okay, Mansi, Mansi, yes, Mansi, you are, you had shared with me some questions yesterday from brother. So can you share them yourself? Hello, I think. Uh, yes, yes, I sir, think. yes, sir. So I think uh, the three of them have already been answered. I think most of them have been answered. The only uh, thing which is left is, uh, left is about the Gandhian perspective. Uh, do uh, the mediators in Africa use same techniques which uh, Gandhi had advocated or is there any difference between the, uh, the techniques which are used in Africa? Is there any entrance of Gandhi in mediation process in Africa? Possibly, I think, uh, Mansi, you will have to tell a little bit about the Gandhian approach so that it is easier for brother to so respond. that you can do so you you are the best person to do that no, no, so no, please you, do. you do it you are teaching gandhi in the university so you can share no and you are a lawyer by profession so and that is there so you please share a little bit so that it is easier for brother to respond to your question okay okay sir so by gandhian techniques i mean uh are we emphasizing on being truthful being non-violent and sticking to the principles of uh, like Gandhi had propagated Satyagraha. So uh, how and also he was uh, he was always in uh, favor of uh, being moral and being upright. So is this what we uh, and also not creating fears fear in the mind of uh, people. So uh, is it what uh, are these uh, principles also followed in Africa? And is there any an influence of Gandhi, his non, uh, his principles of truth and non-violence, uh, in in process of mediation in Africa, sir? Okay, um, if I get you rightly, um, Manti, you said Gandhi's principles are moral, being moral, and upright. Be is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, sir. Being and truthful, to... being non-violent. Yes. And truthful. And. Uh, the second one, not creating fears in the minds of the people. Yes, sir. Is that yes, correct? Sir. So right, in the mind of right. the people, for us now, for people in our own instance, in for the for our purpose right now, we disputants, people who are involved in the issues of uh, mediation. This, they call them disputants. So basically, as it is, really, they are all the same, because a, 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 the, the, the techniques, Gandhi's principles resonate with the practice here too because you cannot actually do a thorough process of mediation without being moral, being upright, and being truthful. Because once you're found 
in any process of mediation not to have, for, like, for instance, you know, when I, I mentioned some points, I said establishing impartiality, establishing credibility. If this fact about you as a mediator is not well known, it can be, somebody can appeal the settlement agreement. If you're not morally, up, if you're not truthful in establishing your impartiality, in establishing your credentiality, then, and you reach a decision as a mediator to have a settlement agreement, it can be appealed. So in other words, if you do not have these basics, as you've said Gandhi had, then mediation can work. So in conclusion, this is a necessary requirement for mediation in Africa too. Then not creating fears in the minds of people. You, if you, if anything that will disturb the process of mediation, anything that will give an unnecessary advantage to another in the process of mediation can be appealed over. Each party is given an equal right. So if you create any mind, any, if you create fear in any mind of the disputants, that process is null and void. So in other words, I can authoritatively tell you that Gandhi's principles are also a guidance. Uh, I will beg your pardon. Gandhi's principles are a strong guide for those of us in Africa as mediators practicing in Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, uh, yeah, uh, br uh, brother, there is something uh, we have already, of course, uh, talked about it. Uh, sometime back, uh, we were having this uh, dialogue with a very senior arbitrator from uh, Australia, Mr. Simon Howden. And in fact, he shared a very interesting insight that is basically like for a successful mediation process uh, or a successful result of the mediation, it is 80% the ingenuity lies on the 80 percent lies on the ingenuity of the communication skills of the mediator and only 20 percent on the mediation process uh, here in this case i would really like you to also reflect on this particular statement by this very senior australian mediator do I, you agree I share, yeah i do i share that more to him because you know mediation is about thinking outside the process as a mediator you have to be able to think outside the box you have to have a level of intelligence. It's just not, it, I, I, with all due respect, it just is not an, or having a, a, it's not an ordinary intelligence. Uh, listen, you have to have some level of high intelligence because you have once matters are locked, once matters have reached the zenith, no other point. You have to be able to be like a resource expander. You need to know how to, you know, look outside the box. You need to know how to manage emotions. You need to know how to know how to, you know, bring together differences and bring a positive outlook from those differences. So mm. I agree with him that. 80% of the work in mediation is really done by the mediator. But no and no and behold, the decision is finally that of the parties. Because mediation That's is a voluntary process. It's the parties mm. that decide what happens in mediation. But mm. the mediator really is the one that fine-tunes the process. Mm -hmm. So you can you can you can't fine-tune a process if you don't have the ability. Mm. So you have to be in, you have the I agree with him, you have to be, you have to think above, you have to think outside the box, you have to be a resource expander. If people have issues that are deadlocked, you have to think out to unlock those issues. And once mm -hmm. you do that, you become a resource expander. You've created more room for the mm -hmm. disputant parties to look at issues from another angle. And that mm -hmm. looking at issues from another angle could give them room, the leeway to eventually reach a settlement agreement. That's right. That's right. So uh, here uh, in this case, uh, also, uh, I would, uh, you know, uh, like to ask you, yesterday we were talking on the importance of peer mediation and you said that you are also working on it and in fact uh, here we are also trying to promote peer mediation though uh, it is hardly uh, any, uh, something which has got any uh, you know it, it doesn't have much kind of a importance that has been given so far uh, here in India when we are talking of actually peer mediation so uh, what has been your experience of peer mediation especially in educational institutions like schools and uh, what kind of a model that you would suggest on uh, so that uh, for for a successful peer mediation program to be uh, you know taken up in a say educational institution like schools we are trying we are uh, still not uh, you know it is just in the nation stage where we are trying to experiment so it would be so good if we can learn from your own experience of peer mediation on how we introduce it in the uh, you know educational institutions yes brother well 
I've, I've, I'm also in a similar boat like yours in Nigeria, for instance, and in Africa as a whole. Peer mediation is not established. I'm mm. trying to be, I'm trying, I'm, I'm more like a pioneer. I see myself as a pioneer in that field. You know, mm. the, the little knowledge I have about peer is about research. And I'm, I'm by virtue of relationship with some uh, institutions and some centers abroad. You know, mm. when I read through some of their works and I do a lot of bit of research, and I, 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 I kind of uh, adopt some of their procedures and I bring them to, I try to, you know, bring them to the fore within my peculiarity, within my client. You know, mm. so basically, peer mediation, like I said, I'm in the same boat with you, it's just, it's almost non existent in Nigeria. But mm. in, in, in view of the current happenings in the world, with conflicts mm. here and there, children being soldiers and the rest of them, in mm. view of the current troubles in the world, the conflicts are rising here and there. I believe strongly that the way to help some of these issues is to actually address the matter of peer mediation urgently and expediently. Expediently, you have this matter has to be addressed urgently. So how do I? That is why I have gone out of my way to say, okay, now I was discussing with you. I said, uh, well, you were telling me about. I said this part of all this is not about whether we like it or not. This is involved funds because you need to reach out to schools. I don't know. Nigeria is such a big place. You have thirty six states plus one, the federal capital territory. You need to reach out to schools. You need to create centers. You need mm -hmm. to train teachers. If you train teachers on, you know, teachers, students, pupils, mm -hmm. if you train them, you could say, okay, for instance, you could go, you could say, okay, in Mumbai, you, you, Mumbai could be your, 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 your pilot center. You could train a lot of people there and say, okay, everybody that is coming from so, 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 let Mumbai be the stop center. If Mumbai, all your, if your, if your lieutenants in Mumbai cannot handle particular issues, Instead of you being there every day, you can say, okay, I'll fly in once a while, once in a week or whatever, and address the issues. Then the teachers you've trained should be able to handle some other issues. Mm -hmm. That will step. What, what is the essence of peer mediation, really? The essence of peer mediation is that when these children grow up as adults, their level mm -hmm. of, you know, the, 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 the level of tolerance for conflict will be, will be zero. They will have no tolerance for conflict because they've been mm -hmm. trained on how to handle conflicts, right, from when they were little children. That is my. That is actually my. That is actually my target. That is my vision to see how these children, how these children, their issues, how these children, you can get them at this little age for them to appreciate the importance of peace. If they can act as peace ambassadors at this early age, then plus or minus the level of conflict will be reduced to the barest minimum. You can't start teaching a man who is almost 20, 30 on what mm -hmm. and on, on, on carbon peace. He might not resonate with that. But a little child has a possibility that a child. Who is seven, six, five, four, three? You know, mm. if you start, you know, if you start towing him towards mediation, there's a possibility that once he gets to have a stage of the level of conflict around him, you have zero tolerance for conflict. Mm -hmm. That is my. Yeah. That is actually my vision. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, here, uh, what uh, I uh, I have tried to gauge is basically there are two different approaches when we are talking of peer mediation. One is the say for instance in the context of schools here i'm talking one is the, the whole school approach where also you involve the teachers the principal the school authorities Good. there could be yes the and, senior uh, because, students the senior yes. the senior the, you know, if you have a junior and secondary the senior students those of them who are getting ready i don't know how your educational system is run those of them who are getting ready to go to the universities maybe the ones in the last class in the second senior secondary school they are like they, they are older so they, you know, if you have like senior professors, they are older, they have that, they've, they've been taught. So they can also cover the gap. While you, you might not always be, it might not be feasible for you to be there every time. You've already created a center. You've already equipped them with a little bit of knowledge. Yes, they might not have it to the Zenith, but they can reach you up, they can reach out to you when the issues get out of hand. Then instead of you being there every time, you can make a dash and do what you have to do and go out. Mm -hmm. Here, I think uh, what we should do is also try to, find out uh, the different models that might have might are there in other countries say especially the western countries because uh, i what in fact uh, some time back i was taking part in a, uh, a, a dialogue with uh, some of these experts from the united states and uh, uh, czech republic and a few other countries and they were talking about the whole school approach where uh, say even in a classroom Say, for instance, some student has that mediation mindset who is really doing well. So she or he is given like a cap to, you know, to distinguish, yes, she or he is a mediator who can come, uh, come in between. Plus, also, 
the whole aim is to ensure that this whole environment of mediation is there in the whole not just in the classroom but also in the whole uh, school situation so that uh, you know say teacher to teacher conflict or teacher and the principal or school authorities and the teachers uh, conflicts gets also resolved in this whole process so but i think since you are also in the nascent stage and we are also in the nascent stage it would be prudent if we can identify some interesting people who are actually involved in uh, you know peer mediation to talk to us so that uh, uh, we have a greater understanding of the whole subject and the different even, models even, if, yeah even though i'm at the initial stage i must without sending any modest um, kundu i have a great knowledge of this peer mediation i yeah. i I'm, but yes i have because of a lot of research i've done on it but by mm. and also in addition and i thank god for that uh, uh, there's a particular mediation center abroad that they are willing to share my expert they are willing to share their expertise with okay. me you okay. understand in improving this i could also maybe as time goes on we could all see how we can all partner together to achieve success with regards to peer mediation yes 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 possibly you uh, we could have a session with the those people uh, to have a greater understanding and if you remember i shared with you one of my own blogs on peer mediation yesterday with you if you get okay. the time to uh, read please read that uh, blog of mine on peer mediation i will so, i will once i have the time i will uh -huh, definitely definitely so i think we should try to focus a lot on that and also of course i would request our friend elizabeth to help us because she is with the mediators without borders and she is in touch with some lot of uh, mediators and also peer mediators from all across the world i think we could have the next session we could have on peer mediation to get some no interesting problem. insights from different countries on what they are trying to do no what i should what i think we should do as you say I, I don't mind anytime you invite me i'm available what i think we should do i could run your i could run your participants through because you have to have let them have the ones that are very i don't know how or you know i think the next topic yes hello Romantic. Hello, can you can you please repeat because I have I was not able to listen. Uh, this uh, peer mediation. Let peer mediation be the last. But let your people, let your participants appreciate this very very crucial as adults. First of all, let them appreciate this. Then the peer mediation we can delve into it later. Okay, 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 okay. No, can you repeat again what you said because I was uh, it seems there was a problem of connectivity, so I could not uh, I, hear the phone. I said, I said, like you've invited me today to share my knowledge on community mediation. Whenever you're, right. you're willing, whenever it's convenient again for you to invite me, I'll be available subject to my itinerary. I'll be available mm -hmm. to share. The, I can say you can say, okay, the next topic is on commercial mediation. The next topic is on is on environmental. The next topic is on land land uh, land and uh, landlord tenancy issues. I'm mm -hmm. sure your participants will find this very interesting. The peer mediation mm -hmm. can, can come much much later. Because yeah, you're, yeah. Dealing with, you're dealing with you're dealing with adults here, aren't you? Hmm. No, no. We are actually. I'm dealing not just with adults. The last uh, some uh, 15 days back, we started the whole thing with uh, some of the schools in one of the states in India where we are actually running the school. Uh, but of course, now everything uh, is come to a standstill. Okay, be that as it may. Any any so any 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 area of mediation you, you want me to share my knowledge, I'm available. That's right. That's right. No, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. And in fact, we have recorded. Uh, we have recorded this whole session, and we. Please, I, I would like to have. It. I would like to have. I would like to have it because I want to also share it. Yes, yes, yes. I will. I will definitely share with you the recording. And of course, as I said, this recording we are going, uh, transcribing it so that it is going to be part of the course uh, reading material of the course that we are trying to put together on community. I hope, you, I hope you found it interesting. No, no, no. It is very interesting. And if you give permission, we can give some quotes from your book. Of course, giving credit to you and the book at all, uh, per se in the course material, because uh, it is ab absolutely very, very simple to understand for young people. It's very good, actually, the book. <clears throat> so, what, what, you should, what, what I want for you, Gundi, is for you to get a very cheap, let the people, to be on Amazon very soon, $4. I'm sure people can afford that. Yes, yes, yes. No, definitely. I've already shared with number of my friends, especially. Yes, once the book is on Amazon, I'll let you know so they can make payments and uh, I get some reward for the hard work. 
Okay, oh, definitely, definitely. You deserve that. You, you actually deserve it because it's very well put together, this book. So, Thank you very much. It, I'm just telling Elizabeth also that's a really good book, and I hope she has been able to go through it. So, yes, <laughs> that's yes, right. Yes. Any, any other question from anyone? Any final question? Because probably, brother, yes, uh, uh, is, uh, it's almost. Can, 11, I, can so I ask something? something? Can I ask yes. something? Yes, definitely, Rajvi. Please ask. Yes. Please ask. Uh, Mr. Baku, uh, thank you so much. I mean, it has been a wonderful session, I think. Um, I just, I have one point, I mean, while I was hearing uh, you talk, uh, and you have spoken about inclusiveness and everything, which is so fantastic. Can you just share me some uh, insights on the whole idea of non-cooperation and how uh, you deal with mediation or, or as a mediator? Ah, sorry. Could you? You are the one that has pronounced my name very well. So I want to give. I want to give my best time to you. Could you? Could you come again with a question? I didn't hear you well. Sorry. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes. Yes. Uh, you. I mean, I was hearing uh, you, Mr. Beck. So thank you so much. Uh, but uh, well, uh, I mean, one point which is you know, I mean, going around in my mind is that you have spoken about. Uh, inclusiveness the approach uh, how uh, like one has to have and have a constructive approach and so on and so forth but as a mediator how do you deal with a totally non-cooperative attitude or non-cooperation if i may use the word and uh, how do you bring them to the desk wow 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 beautiful question my friend beautiful question very beautiful question uh, you know, like I said initially, that's why I was telling Kundu when we said that I needed to build a foundation before delving straight into community mediation. Mediation is a voluntary process. I don't know if you appreciate that. It's voluntary. So in other words, if, if you're not willing to mediate, in other words, if you're uncooperative, you cannot mediate. If you're uncooperative to mediate, yeah. nobody can force you to mediate. The only person that can, the only, the only process that can, is when you have a court ordered mediation. When a court says, mm -hmm. go and mediate, that is the only force mm -hmm. that comes in. But if it's about mm -hmm. parties being willing to mediate, if you're uncooperative, if you do not have the mindset to mediate, the mediation cannot take place. Then it's different mm -hmm. from you saying, okay, you know, there's some people that can say, ah, you know, at the initial stage, they could be uncooperative. They, they are not knowing what the process is all about. So what does it behove on the mediator? As a mediator, it behoves on you to let the person know that, look, don't be so, don't be uptight about this process. This process is not about you being in court. This process is not about technicalities. This process, you knew actually that this process is your process. It's what you tell me that will eventually determine what the settlement agreement will be. I believe we all know what the settlement agreement is. The settlement agreement is like what you get in court as judgment. That is the final decision. Mm -hmm. So once you mm -hmm. put that across to the person, and the person is a bit uptight, you know, once somebody knows that, oh, okay, I'm not here, I'm not going to be, there are, no, there are not much technicalities. If I say something, I will not, it will not be used against me. You know, once you make the person a bit more comfortable. So if the person okay. forms, you know, once you can make the person comfortable towards the process and he buys into it, then you can mediate. But if you've tried mm -hmm. all this, if you've tried all this, uh, if you've tried all these little, little tricks, you know, med mediation, you know, to try to make the person feel comfortable and the person still does not buy into it, then he cannot mediate because you cannot force him or her to mediate. It's a voluntary process. But if you've tried mm -hmm. to make the person feel comfortable, initially, yeah, somebody could be uptight about what he doesn't, he or she doesn't know about. And he, he could, mm -hmm. from that being uptight, relax a bit and buys into it, you can mediate further. But if the person, in spite of all, everything you've tried to make him or her comfortable, refuses, still remains uncooperative, mediation process mm -hmm. cannot take place. Right, right, right. Thank you. I mean, one, I mean, and just taking a cue from what you said, uh, just could you just share one more thing about your experience in working in the community in your own country? Have you ever come across a situation where you have seen two young boys fighting over an issue and which has turned more violent than expected? And as a mediator, uh, how long did it take to you to you know, bring that situation or build those two parties into a table and sort it out or, uh, you know, and end the matter. Any, well, any, okay. any... 
your, I'm not, your, with your own example, I've not seen it particularly, but I've seen it. I've seen an issue where I've seen an issue where um, where two particular people were bickering. They were not fighting. They bickered. They made a lot of noise. And I raised that mm -hmm. issue at the beginning of where they had a trash can, where you had a, mm -hmm. you know a, you have a trash can for uh, for uh, removing your debts, your compound, the dustbin, and the people were they all they share they share. They they, they they live they live in a block of flats, and you know mm -hmm. as you keep as you keep stuffing your bean with your vet, you know the place becomes uncomfortable for the next neighbor, and the next neighbor mm -hmm. is saying, "Is this woman doing this intentionally? After all, you can still get a bean, you can get a bean bag. Why would you want to? You know, the, you know, human beings, even the devil. I'm a lawyer. Even the devil does not know the intention. Doesn't know what your mind is all about. You understand? Mm -hmm. So basically. The, people, the woman just kept saying, maybe this person has been intentional about this, trying to aggravate me to make a quarrel. So basically, mm -hmm. I had to reach out to them to say, no, it's not about bickering. All we need to do, you know, when people are so uptight about issues, it's very difficult. It's only the very same one that can say, okay, can right. I just take a time off and look at how I can resolve this issue? When people are up, right. up there in annoyance or anger, they had, it's only the wise one that was okay. Let me take off. Let me take a bit of time. Let me let me reason through this. So I just told them, look, yeah. these issues you're bickering over. All we need to do is just to apply to the authorities. They give us one more can, one more trash can, and this mm -hmm. matter will be reduced. These issues will will, will be non-existent. And it, true to my words, it happened. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, my last my last point. I won't take much time. My last point to you uh, is that. Uh, Sometimes non cooperation is also a form of non-violence. As a mediator, how do you deal with it? You said what? non cooperation Sometimes non cooperation is also seen a form of as a form of non-violence uh, or communication or, or non-violence per se. So how do you deal with it? As a I mediator? can't. I, I I I'm sorry to say I can't I can't relate it to because you know. Um, if if you're not cooperating, if you're not cooperating, you know, uh, if you're not cooperating, you're now basically, you know, like, like I reeled out some facts about nonviolent communication. If you're not cooperating, you're basically happening on issue. You're mm -hmm. now you're now inadvertently relating the matter to an issue, because nonviolent communication has, like I said initially, I said it's a language function and emotion. These are the two focal points in, in, in nonviolent communication. It's all about the it's all about compassion, trying to reach out to the trying to reach out to the parties to say we can do this and achieve this. All you have to do is you know, take a, take this person's place. And in nonviolent communication, your 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 mind is zero towards resolving the matter, being you know being empathic, being the emotion, the feelings of the person. You're not looking about mm -hmm. whether the person is right or wrong. You're looking on how to resolve the matter. So if somebody is non-cooperative, you can't you can't really you can't really relate it to non-violent. I don't know if I'm making any sense to you. You can't relate no, it to non-violent yeah, communication. I agree. I agree. Uh, yes, I may I I differ to an extent, but I think I agree to a point <laughs> also. Uh, but thank you, thank you, Mr. Becker. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Whether it's uh, all yours. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, brother. It has been very interesting points that you uh, flagged up on our understanding of uh, mediation and all these people who are there, they have been into the field of mediation. So it is a very good experience for all of them to understand uh, the whole different nuances of mediation and from a perspective uh, which is from a totally different country. And uh, so it is so important to understand the best practices from different parts of the world so that we can contribute in a much, much uh, concrete way, in a much, much focused way. That is all our effort is. And uh, so uh, I think we should all be in touch, uh, brother, and uh, we should work further on this. And in fact, uh, uh, I am uh, uh, personally and also institutionally, we are very, very keen to promote this whole idea of community uh, mediation and also peer mediation. In fact, uh, for your information, we are celebrating the 75th anniversary of the independent India's independence. And as part of that- Yeah, uh, congratulations. Yeah, so we have decided to 
uh, promote this whole idea of community mediation and peer mediation in a big way all across the country you see india is a big country so that is a big challenge so it would always be a great pleasure and honor if you uh, share your ideas and thoughts so that we can contribute in a much much better way uh, so uh, if anyone no one has any other question for uh, brother uh, we could uh, close today's meeting with uh, thanks thanking him once again profound thanks for giving his time uh, and those insightful ideas and pointers uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, working with you further brother and as i said it would be so wonderful if we can have said three four different people who are actually working on the field of peer mediation coming in and sharing their ideas so that each one of us can possibly benefit from that so uh, let's Vidar, look forward Vidar ji. yes please Vidar ji. i mean i was i mean i do not know i mean i mean i, I should not be taking much time but uh, just one thing which was going around in my mind is if mr Becker could just answer uh, like points out if I'm, I may be wrong and I may be just wasting a time, but something which is going, does drama play a role in the mediator's life during mediation? Drama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Interesting. If I, if I does drama. Yeah, yeah. Does drama play a role in a mediator's life during mediation or applying his mediating? Oh, wow. Actually, you see, role plays have a very important role to play for in the training program. But I'm not. Uh, I don't know. Uh, probably, brother can. Give I mean, I mean, idea. perhaps, like, perhaps I didn't use the word role play. I used the word drama. I mean, uh, it just, it just triggered in my mind. So I just thought that we put it, put it that way. Well, well, okay, okay. You didn't use the word role play. Okay. We all human beings. For instance, you know, um, you know, uh, for instance, if um, if you have a funny character as a mediator. Uh, you know, there could be, there could be, there could be something. Okay, for instance, you know, mediation is a very, very, is an interesting process. Can you can imagine a situation where if you give a chair that looks more expensive to a disputant, maybe you have two, issues, two parties who are, you know, they are called disputants in mediation. If you have, if you give a chair that looks more comfortable to a particular party and the other one feels that the chair that was given to him is less comfortable, you understand? As a mm -hmm. as a mediator, mm -hmm. the reaction maybe the person could say, "Okay, why did you give me this?" As a mediator, you could uh, you could find that amusing and laugh. You know that mm -hmm. could be a bit of drama. Mm -hmm. You could find it amusing <laughs> and laugh. I said, "Sorry, I didn't think about it in that manner." But that little, but mm -hmm. be that as you may, that little that little mistake made by you because in mediation, what you do mm -hmm. for Mr. A, you should do for Mr. B. If you're giving mm -hmm. Mr. A, if you're giving Mr. B a very comfortable chair, Mr. A should have equally. A very comfortable chair. So you know, human personalities, human pe we are human beings. Our personalities play out in whatever we do. The only thing is that make sure it does not, it does not affect the process. Right, right, absolutely. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Interesting points, but interesting. <laughs> These are all very interesting insights, I suppose. So I think thank you, uh, brother. Is you okay? Uh, it is. It was wonderful listening to you. And I'm sure we will look forward here. Unfortunately, is it possible for a second for all of us to switch off?